Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch Hidden Figures to see how accurate all the science and technology in the movie really are. Well, that's in the wrong spot. Get a girl. This is very accurate to the times, the IBM 790 data processing system. That thing cost like $3 million back in 1960, which is $20 million in today's money. Don't worry, for $20 million, you get 50,000 transistors. It can perform, I think, 3 million bits. Took up an entire room just to take the smallest of calculations. For context, the iPhone 6 has 1.6 billion transistors, can calculate 3.36 billion instructions per second. The iPhone that people walk around in their pockets with has more computing power than the Apollo 11 that sent someone to the moon. Russian orbital entry is established. Jim Webb. Yes, Mr. President. And we certainly are, sir. Uh, it looks like they've achieved at least one orbit, maybe two. There are different orbitals of the Earth. Earth actually has three to be exact. There's low, mid, and high. Weather and communication satellites are in high orbit, farthest from the Earth's surface. GPS satellites are in mid orbit, and then scientific satellites, as well as the International Space Station, the ISS, are in low Earth orbit. Something really weird happens when objects are really far from their center of gravity, which they're orbiting around, and they don't orbit in perfect circle. They orbit in the shape of an ellipse. This is called an eccentric orbit. And if you actually look at how the planets are orbiting around the sun, you'll see that they're in an elliptical shape. And the farther a planet is from its center of gravity that it's orbiting, the more elliptical the shape becomes. The closer the satellite is to Earth, the faster it's actually moving around the planet because the stronger the pull of gravity is on that object. NASA's Aqua satellite, for example, takes 99 minutes to make one rotation around the Earth versus the moon that takes 28 days. Finally ready for that space flight that we've been waiting for with so much anticipation. A hesitancy. These curved lines on the emission control map show the orbital path of whatever is orbiting our planet. Where it's going, where it's been, and all the times in between. The reason that these lines aren't perfectly straight is because the Earth is tilted on its axis about 23.5 degrees. That's also why the space in between all these orbital curves when they cross the equator is 23.5 degrees. The green dot on the map shows where the capsule is currently such that mission control can track all the astronauts' movements and monitor the health of the capsule that they're in. Modern maps will always have a little diagram of where the ISS is currently located in low Earth orbit. The yellow circles over Russia show the ground stations that are providing service to the Russian part of the ISS. SAA stands for South Atlantic Anomaly. Whenever the ISS is flying over that area, their computers have been known to crash or return bit errors or just glitch. Not fully sure why, but if at any time something goes wrong, one of the questions is, hey, are we orbiting over that area of the Atlantic? There's also labels for sun and no sun, depending on whatever objects use solar power for their purposes. The heat shield may have come loose. Seven, will you confirm the landing bag is in the off position? Uh, affirmative, Capcom. Oh, we need to get him down now. He could burn up on re-entry. This is actually not the worst situation that's occurred in space. The Apollo 13 was meant to land on the moon, but an accident in space caused part of the rocket to explode. They actually looped around the moon and started heading back to Earth. Everybody was at mission control because they had 36 hours to save the lives of these astronauts. For three modules on the spacecraft, there was a command module, the service module, and the lunar module. Five hours before re-entry, they fired the lunar module thrusters for exactly 23 seconds to reorient the space shuttle to get to their target landing zone on Earth. 20 minutes after that, they jettisoned the service module, which is another fancy way of saying they discarded it and let it float into open space. 13,000 miles from Earth, the astronauts depressurized the space between the remaining two modules, the command module and the lunar module. And once that was complete, they jettisoned the lunar module as they headed right towards Earth, just blazing through the atmosphere. Both the lunar module and the service module burned up upon re-entry, but the command module that had the three astronauts inside of it landed in the Pacific Ocean where they were picked up by the US Navy, returned to NASA with no casualties. As wild as that looks, this really happened exactly as you saw it on the screen. 
all of the initial NASA calculations that sent people to the moon and launched capsules around orbit were done by hand. Earlier, we actually saw a test failure, which is very, very common. Those still happen today. But the big difference is before actually building a product to test in an environment or field, you completely optimize it in CAD, computer automated design. And the reason you do that is because if whatever you're building is not absolutely perfect on the computer, there is no chance it's gonna work in the real world. When a new piece of program comes along and it's like, hey, we're doing stuff using this method now, you just have to learn it. That's it, you get a manual, you get a demo, it's like figure it out, here's the new industry standard, go for it. And if you're really fortunate, you can have your coworkers who kind of already know it and like understand the tool, explain it to you better. That graph does look correct because that's the path that a natural logarithm graph will actually take. In the variables she listed above, she used kilometers per, se kilometers per second, pardon me, for the velocity. Graph in the bottom is actually in miles per hour. She even put the conversion, which is, 30, 59 kilometers or 1900 miles. Everything on that board looks correct. Euler's method. Euler's method. Yes. That's ancient. But it works. It works numerically. Sheldon Cooper is right. Euler's method is a way to solve differential equations when given an initial value. The basis of Euler's method is that you can take a curved line and break it down into multiple smaller little straight lines. These straight tangent lines at multiple intervals are denoted as variable h. That's your step size. And the shorter your step size is, the more accurate your solution will be. You think you can find me the Frenet frame for this data? Using the gram schmidt Orthogonalization algorithm? Yes, sir. I prefer it over Euclidean coordinates. I'm not sure why she prefers orthonormal over Euclidean coordinates. I'm definitely not that person. Fernet Serre formulas, what they show is the movement of an object on a differential curve. The unit vectors are T, B, and N. T is the tangent, which shows the direction of the object's motion. N is the normal, which is the differential to the tangent T. And then B is the cross product between T and N. The reason that you can't use XYZ coordinates in this situation is because that 3D space does not account for motion. Try to find the volume of a cube, for example, you can use XYZ coordinates because volume is scalar. It doesn't matter how fast the object is moving or in what direction the cube is going, the volume does not change. I cannot work on what I cannot see, Mr. Stafford. It's illegible. Those numbers have already been confirmed by two engineers in this department and myself. This is more or less a dummy check. You can't say that on your job. <laughs> There's no way you're gonna get away with that. Engineers make mistakes all the time. It doesn't matter, like if you're working on a schematic, it could be a spelling error, a format issue, or even a dimension like calculation. You always wanna have more people checking your work than less because that's how you're gonna get the best product possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.